episode of Between the Sheets podcast here on the United Broadcasting Network. Happy Fourth of July weekend. Um, new glasses, just FYI. Nice. Uh, <laughs> thanks. I, I thought pink. so. Yeah, new glasses. And of course, I went in to pick them up today and had to spend more money on getting new sunglasses, which I don't really need, but I had to. Um, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it is got seven p.m. Pacific. Uh, follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, and uh, Between the Sheets Facebook page, Between the Sheets on Facebook. I don't know what the hell I said it twice. Twice. Um, uh, 323 524 2599. Please call in. Um, we have the 4th of July skeleton crew today. Um, <laughs> are, you saying, are you saying I'm skinny? Yeah, uh, we're all skinny now. <laughs> okay, I'll take um, that. But because uh, everyone's out and about. I sound Canadian for a second. Out and about. Out and about. <laughs> um, actually, even it's uh, Tony's here, and Tony's going to be here for the entire show. That oh, never yeah. happened. Yay! <laughs> Yay, Tony. So um, to the left of me, I have Mara Shane. Hello, hello. I'm excited to be left here right. amongst you lovely ladies. What does your T-shirt say, Mara? Ooh, oh, babe. Babe in 3D. Babe. Um, <laughs> babe in 3D. Um, we have Roxanne Rosen at the left. With new Macy pants or some shit she bought. I don't know what that was. <laughs> and look at the shoes. Well, luckily she has pants on. I, mean, a, I bet she has pants on today. Pants really isn't needed, but okay. Well, no. I mean, obviously, with, <laughs> obviously, being home during COVID, um, everything from in Zoom calls and everything from the waist down, questionable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> none of us are wearing pants right now. None. None whatsoever. I know, right? Um, and then I have to the extreme left of me that's me cara noble who this was to be her last show in studio she is going oh. abroad um oh, and she oh. and she may try and call in it depends on the the time frame. well it's the time thing because i'm going to europe and i'm right now in europe it's like three in the morning so if i was to join you girls it's well, not you an impossibility you could totally do it well but you'd be just yes. getting you'd be just getting in at that time so you'd be already <laughs> exactly. done up you'd be there done you up you'd be how done long are you, uh, well, how long are you staying tending there? to my 93 year old cousin <laughs> yes <exactly. laughs> now cara how long are you going to be there for well i'm going to i plan to be there quite a while because i'm going to go for a week and then i'm going to go around the country with my sister in a car then i'm going to do my son's wedding oh. and then we're going to a festival this, Lovely. Is, this all happens. It may, nice. it may not happen. That Who sounds knows? so fun. And then after that, I'll come back to London. Then I'm going to jump on a plane. Please, God. And go mm -hmm. to France. <gasps> yes. Because I have a place in France, as you may or oh. may not know. Oh. But I do. Okay, do I'll join you. And you all need to come before it gets sold. Because it's going to get come. sold. <laughs> okay. So did I'm you there. sell wow. it? Have, has That's, it been sold? It got sold, almost sold twice. And then it just fell through again two days Where ago. Where is it in oh. France? In Nice, in South of France, oh, in yes, Nice. I will be there. Oh. In the old town. <laughs> totally. It's gorgeous. So well, wow. go. Is it a go. chateau? It's no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It's a charming apartment quite near the, uh, the seaside. Nice. Okay. It's lovely. But then, if that doesn't, I'll go there for a bit. And then, quite frankly, why not? I'm going to like get a train to Italy, or I'm going to jump on a night train to Barcelona. Uh. I'm going to do whatever I want because I fucking can. That's how right. yeah, baby. I'm going to go with you. <laughs> Bloody hell. Right? Yeah. I love it. Well, I see a lesbian party in Nice coming soon because Cara <laughs> is the queen of lesbian parties. But she's not. But she's not a lesbian. It's but such no. a shame. I know. It's, it's sad. I it's know, a waste. Right? <laughs> but the thing is, speaking <laughs> of waste. that, my birthday party <laughs> two years ago, I can't believe how long ago it was. Um... We had this big, I had this huge party. I've been mean, 300 and something people. So obviously last year, nothing happened, but it's now becoming like, an, I'm going to want it to become an annual event because it was pretty fun. And so I that called Cara wild. and I said, Cara, can I do my party at your house this year? And she said, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, my dear. So we're having the party at Cara's house and um, it's going to be either the second or third week in december but we haven't really said about talking about it. and it's so funny around my friends are like but again it's like six months away i said it doesn't matter we have to worry <laughs> about the jews that's the problem i'm right one, and i mean they've got to have their um whatever, hanukkah. Their hanukkah thing oh. right well wow. like, i know i'm like i'm so confused, confused. <laughs> well hold on you before we talk hold on, before we talk about the jews joining us again as guest co-host and we we interviewed her and we love her it, all the way from sb 
uh, uh, Amadeus. So Amadeus. Okay. Amadeus. Hey. Dressed as a, with a lovely little hat. What kind of hat is that? This is called a tricorn or a three-cornered hat. And I actually do actually wear it. That's I said cute. actually twice. I yeah, love that you do it. The 4th of July, you know, anybody who knows me, I'm my little quill pens. I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know. Ah. I don't know in this century. So, yeah. <laughs> I think we need to go to Santa Barbara and visit her. I go there a lot. I love Santa Barbara. Okay. Well, I do know that a friend of mine does go to Santa Barbara. When she does, Amadeus, they you know, always go out to dinner. So Amadeus is open. Come. I, like your birthday party, come drink wine with me. Whoever wants to. I, I'll get wine for people. Come to Santa Barbara. Okay, we'll Montecito. go visit you. My friends are in Montecito. Yes, in Montecito. Oh, I was Montecito. Montecito is beautiful. It's kind of yeah. close, isn't it? I love it up there. No. It's, yes, it's a few minutes from my house. Yeah. Minutes, okay. Nice. All right, so we have to go. We have a road trip. We used to do this. All our guests and stuff used to always invite us, remember? And we're like, okay, we'll go here. We go here. Oh, party, another party, another party. So we just turn into this whole B BTS sort of- I love um, it amoeba we just travel and collect and collect each other so okay i gotta go back what about the jews well because yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, they because they have to have their own hanukkah party so you don't want to steal all the all oh. the weekends at christmas because you upset the jews i was oh. not no not in my case no, not so in my sick. case because i i mean i'm jewish but uh, it's weird my half of the family my just my dad my mom and my sister and i um, I never had to go to uh, Temple. I know it's. I'm making it sound like a chore. I never got to go there. <laughs> I I never went Come to on. Israel. I never had a bat mitzvah, and I always had. Wow. I always, from the time I was a kid till I was like um, eleven, we did Hanukkah and Christmas because my parents felt so badly growing up, never having a freaking Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to do that to their kids. Right. Oh, that was so nice. I grew up with. Um, You're not a proper Jew. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm a Jew light. Yeah, I don't even know. That. That. I don't know if that's so even that. Wait, did you have I like she's a proper Jew? I got. I got to jump in. I, that's the quintessential American Jewish experience. Is it uh, really? I'm not being Jewish ish. Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> Jew ish. Yeah. 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 My yeah. race is Jewish, but I, never, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. So did you yeah. just have like Hanukkah and, and Christmas like presents like every single day for like several weeks? Not the Christmas presents. I got the eight days of Hanukkah. Uh, presents and then I got my Christmas presents and then a couple months like a month and a half later I got my birthday presents sometimes they <laughs> oh, would try wow. to they try to jit me and they try to give me hey this is for your birthday and Christmas this present <laughs> Fuck I hate Jews. that <laughs> I know <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> look I never came from that my my uh, Christmas is well first of all we didn't celebrate Hanukkah and I never understood mm. why because gift giving should be universal whether you're Jew or not uh, eight days, six days, I want them. And I'm an only <laughs> child, so we should have had, like, a Hanukkah. Um, but then my birthday's on the 27th, and Christmas is on the 25th. Yeah. And no, 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 no. I demand it. Yeah, you're right after Christmas. I have, I demand it. You know, only child, too. So there was a lot of yeah. demanding going on that there was no way that they could ever combine that wow. ever that's, that's, that's terrible it, it is, is terrible Italians. they cannot be trusted and mine's None. like february so that yours is two days after christmas i know so i don't know how you got you know that well, you did that you actually you actually were able to do that i've never met anybody that's been able to do that with their birthday around there they i think say, it's because i'm an only child thing <laughs> You know, and I and, and you know, I'm not demure. I mean, I was pretty I'm pretty blunt and vocal, yeah. so I, I'm very you know, it's like nah, I, I think that's wrong. You speak your mind. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's really yeah. wrong. I mean, you know, so your birthday is my mother, May thirty first, and my father June twelfth. You know, should I say I'm combining it? There's six months in between. I don't think that's fair. No. That is I mean, not. and I am, you know, and I was a victim. Did I choose to be born two days after Christmas? No. Absolutely not. So you made the mistake. I have to pay for it. No, not so much. It's weird because um, the Hanukkah thing stopped when I was eleven, and we just had Christmas from them. <laughs> I don't know. I think we just we're all artists in my family, and I think the art of decorating the tree was just it blew everything else out of the water. Oh, that so is so <laughs> yeah. that was why. But I, I do like some of those Jewish Hanukkah songs, like one candle. I don't even candle. know them. I know a lot of them. I'm I not. Wait, 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 hold on. 
I'm not a lesbian. I'm not Jewish. What the hell am I doing? I know you. You have an identity. <laughs> you have an identity crisis. But I'm pointing. But the point is, Cara, are those songs, those Hanukkah songs, are they real traditional Hanukkah? Like dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. Like the dreidel, dreidel song. Now that one I don't. Like. Okay, but that's a traditional one. <laughs> I know. Or. Or are they Beanie Polsky originals? That's the thing. So you really no, don't you're right. know. Who's Beanie Polsky? Okay, you go with Beanie Polsky. I don't know any of it. She's the mother of our great friend Penny. Oh, The grandmother okay. of our fabulous daughter, Shireen. Mm -hmm. And she's a wild one. Oh, she's wild. She smoked her first joint with Bob, Bob Marley. Marley. Oh, that would that's, be amazing. That's an amazing yeah. story <laughs> right there. She stories. And she's, she's wild. But, she, but she, whenever we go to one of her... Jewish events like a Seder or a Hanukkah party. She does play the piano when we do sing crazy songs and some of them are written by by mm. us, in fact. Right, <laughs> so what she'll do is she'll take that. a traditional melody, a traditional melody, right. and then she'll, you know, other people, not just her, but like Kara, people will put words to it and you know, and it's funny. She's got the Hanukkah book, and it's as is nothing to do. It's 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 about Hanukkah, but it's set to like Broadway tunes or some <laughs> shit. It's pretty fun. Uh, it's just so wild. so interesting segue here. But um, did you know? I don't know how many of you out there watched the L word. There there was the real L word. There was the original one, just the L word, the with the with Kate Manning and. Your um, girlfriend. Oh, yeah, my girlfriend, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this then they had Generation Q that Which came was out bad. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite. I mean, you can't compare it to the first no. ones. But now Generation Q is set to come back in August um, for their second season. Oh, wow. Oh, they really? are? Yes, they are coming back. Um, are any of the original people from L1 on LQ? <sighs> well, did you, uh, you if you watched it last season. I couldn't. Oh, well, Look, Kate the, was on it. I'm going to tell you something. Remember, we went, We were at the Soho House. Well, not the Soho. Yeah. Soho House. So we all went to the uh, the part, one of the one of the parties at the Soho House. And you guys were sitting on the couch and shit. Oh, that one. Yeah. And I sat there <laughs> and the we were sitting at the bar, me and a couple other people. Mm -hmm. I'm a days. That's where I met you for the first time. Was yeah, at the, the premiere Soho of the House, L Word. The premiere at the oh, L Word. Yes, you did. Yes, You're that was the first right. time. That was 2019. Which yeah. Soho House? Which one? The it one in West. No, it was a Pally House. Pally House. Pally House. Pally House. Yeah. Far right. That's where I met you. And you were at the bar, and it was. And there were a few of us there. And I'm just watching this, and I'm like, <laughs> I turned around to Kim. I think. I think Kim was with me, and I said, I just can't. I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. It was just boring. Well, and then I, I sampled it, and it was even more boring. I don't know. I was never bored with it, but well, I... You like the sex scenes. No, and that's the funny. Those are the least important <laughs> to me. Like, I don't... I get into the drama. Uh, any scenes where uh, where Kate is on, um, Shane, um, I just... Oh, she, I love the way that she's on first name, but Kate. Kate. I know. Oh, like, <laughs> you know she got Kate. married, too. She got married a couple of years ago. To who? Bitch! I know to, to a girl. Yes, of course. Well, who the hell is she gonna marry? Yeah. Well, um, and then there's know. okay. So Jennifer Beals will still be on it. And now and she's beautiful, not a lesbian. She's beautiful, but beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what's the one that mm. plays? Oh God, what is her name? Well, not not Alice. The one that plays Alice is um, Haley. Haley, the, the she was in a band too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love her. <laughs> I love yep. her. And then um, there's the other one. Play, by the way, plays mm -hmm. Tina. As a human. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm really, I mean, no, be, no, nothing could compare to that first round. I mean, seasons yeah. one, two, and three of the original L Word were. Uh, <laughs> I'm just so disappointed it was canceled. But the reality, but, but, you know, I actually was having this conversation with someone the other day about the L Word. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you look at it, I guess, look, it is drama, but it is pale in comparison to. To what really happens out there? Oh, oh, oh yes! <laughs> oh my god! I think gosh. they they do a good job, but they uh, with it. But of course, they leave out the the crazy high school mentality and a lot of the you know the the clicks and I don't really see a lot of that. And I definitely don't see well this time around with Generation Q. I see much more representation of what the crowd is actually sort of like the first time. <laughs> oh my god! The first time back in two thousand four when it came out. I didn't realize that I was into women and I was like 28 or something, 29. We, what? My friend, my friend and I. <laughs> what did you do till then? Sorry. I dated guys. Um, okay. So my friend and I, we decided we were going to go out and find a Shane. I mean, we, we had to. <laughs> like, it was too hard to just not have one to, in person in the flesh. So 
We went to <laughs> Executive Suites. Oh no! Oh no! Not that. Place. Yes, not that, that was place. the first gay bar I'd Lord. ever been to. We we called I'm ahead sorry. and and used Texas accents because we didn't want anyone to know that we were you know uh, exploring that. <laughs> and we showed up and we my friend and I were the only ones in line with a purse outside. Yeah. And there was <laughs> back then. Okay, they had a lot of Shane clones out there when the L word first came out. Like literally everywhere Everybody. you went, they were dressing like Shane. They had the, the choker the you know, the layered Sally her, um, Hershberger hair and everything, which you know they based that character on Sally, right? Correct, because she is mm -hmm. a lesbian. Uh, she's <laughs> very, yeah. And I just got my hair done at Sally's. And, I mean, that was a treat to get yes. my hair done there. And I was looking around, and I said to my gay hairdresser, and I'm like, why, who's a guy, I'm like, why are there so many, everywhere you look, there's naked photos of women everywhere. And he's like, come on, it's Sally. It's just, <laughs> Sally owns the store, so. <laughs> but anyway, um... I'm looking forward to another lesbian show, but I'm noticing, here's a topic, I am noticing now that in a lot of uh, shows, in a She's lot- She's wound up today, folks! <laughs> She's I, ready I'm to go! I'm throwing you a topic out here. <laughs> a lot of the shows are now incorporating lesbians and gays and, yes, and trans and, and, you know, I I hope one day, uh, this is- And get gays. This, gays and they. Gays, that we get- a lesbian princess Ooh. from Disney. Oh, nice That's, one, baby. You will blow me away if I ever see that. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be <laughs> very extraordinary. That would be crazy. It'll be a while. But I'm going to go I'm back hopeful, though. to your, to, you were 28 and you were dating men up till then, but I understand you're a sugar puff. What, oh, or a sausage bun. I've never once. heard of either. Of what those. is what is it? <laughs> sugar <laughs> puff? Oh no, <laughs> sugar puff. What's a sugar I have puff? no idea. I'm a powder puff, sausage? but I don't know what a sugar is puff what is. is. What's a sugar puff? Is it? I have no idea about either. Of these. Is it not that thing that you were talking about maybe a couple of weeks ago? Last time we were on the show, if you've never had sex. With oh yeah, oh, yeah, gold, yeah, yeah. Gold star. Gold star. That's called, but now that trend is going. That name is not on gold point anymore. anymore. It means something else. Do you know what it means, Roxanne? No, I have no idea. No, I, I, I chose to wait. I wanted to wait until I was in love. Um, and never as it happened. turned out, you never fell ne in love with a man. Never fell in love. No. Never fell in love with a woman yet either, so. Really? But that doesn't mean I don't have a sex life. I swear I have a sex life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to talk about my sex life. <laughs> well, you oh, know, I, I've fallen in love before, but I fall in love with crazies. No, but you fall in love and you fall out of love. You fall in love. Okay. So I uh, like the okay. drama. So I'm a, like, I'm a you like the drama? No, not anymore. Yeah. Oh. Well, I don't know. Hey, I put the brakes on it this year. At, at the end of last year... Dating two full of drama. I'm like, I'm done. That's good. You're putting the brakes on fast. I put the brakes on. Right, today right. is Speaking July. No. Wait a minute. <laughs> July, July 2nd, 2nd okay. at 7 18. <laughs> I, I'm proud to say. Roxanne Rosen, <laughs> otherwise known as Tristan, is saying that as Mary J. Blige would like to say, no more drama. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we all say that. that. We drama it's queens like, do our best. You we know, can't help it. It's that song, I Have One Less Problem Without You. I have not officially dated anyone this year, and I'm proud of that. I mean, I've been on a couple first meets, and I'm like, yeah, no. But I will just, you know, I'm just, I'm making money. I'm making money and just. Like making money, <laughs> like selling sex. <laughs> I mean, I've, been, I've been on a few first meets and I'm making money. <laughs> Think <laughs> before you talk. <laughs> How no, much do you charge? If I was making money, I would be dating someone. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, no. I'm focused on making money and just spirituality this year. I just um, snore. Yeah. I don't know. I <laughs> don't know. Oh, wow. maybe Boring. I'm, okay, but if I date, I'm okay, kidding. maybe I should date. Okay, I'm going out tonight, rooftop of the W. She Let's is. just see who I meet. <laughs> she I'll is. come back. So tomorrow. drama. If you're around, you know her GPS. <laughs> you know? She's out. She's out there. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, I meet for sure. So <laughs> I'm Amadeus. Do you? I mean, have you been around drama? Because I know you're very grounded. And you know you you wear amulets. I'm sure. Actually, we went to a <laughs> amulet. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, yeah. no kidding. It's so funny. We went to this rooftop party on Saturday, and Amadeus was there, and we sort of like said hello. We were talking and doing, and there, you know, obviously there. Anyway, it's interesting. And I just, I, I just, I mean, I said to her, I said, I'm protected. <laughs> 
and, yeah, and, she, and then she had her wrist blasters on. Yeah, like, we're, All right, we're good. Yeah. yeah, we're good. That's <laughs> great. You need to have those when you're in a lesbian party. You need to have an amulet. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been a long time for me to, to learn. So drama. I, You know, I feel like sometimes life is so funny because you have these identities and everybody's so uh, attra- attracted to the identity of you. And my identity was most likely to get married. Yes, to a man. Yes, I was a man. Mm-hmm. And uh, extreme stability to the point where I lived in a house I had with my exes. And it was all copacetic. And I never went on the boulevard. And I lived on in West Hollywood. Otherwise known as Emma Day's head of commune. Okay, go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was it was so drama free. You were wait, you were with a man living with a man? I, I was. I originally was, we moved out to uh, California together. Then we mm-hmm. got a house. Then I got a girlfriend and that mm-hmm. girlfriend moved into the house. He traveled a lot. And it sounds, it sounds maybe bad to you, but it wasn't. I mean, people that know me then, if anybody did, I really didn't know gay people, even though I lived too yeah. much, even though I had a girlfriend, I was very focused on my career. And I just, I'd never been a pod or a group of people, whether they're Jews or artists or whatever they are. But then, you know, I thought, okay, when I broke up, you know, with uh, the girlfriend, I should date because I basically got married in eighth grade. Uh, (laughs) I was always the, you know, I'm a Libra. So (laughs) I started, you know, putting myself, you know, down the boulevard, going to dance because I love to dance at the Abbey. I don't even, I don't even think I drank then. And then I had a couple relationships. Uh, I've never dated actually. (laughs) And me either. I like well, met I, somebody. We yeah. we connected, yeah. like you know, yes. we connected at not, and I didn't sleep with them right away either. So yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and then like, all of a sudden, yeah. I'm in a seven year relationship. Oh right. no, I would. And then never I'm in do a that. 15 year relationship. <laughs> yes, me too. But that had nothing to do with being gay stuff. So nobody can put on me the U-Haul because that happened with males. So that's just me being a Libra. But what happened then is these relationships, the ones I had through sort of, you know, going out and then having some that were more, you know, like three years or two years, uh, suddenly I had this reputation of I went out and then I had drama (laughs) with these people. And I thought it was so funny. I went from, you know, decades of drama free person to now drama. And now I I just can't listen to anything anybody says about that I, I totally agree that with you. Did that make sense? Did I make any sense? Yes. No, you made, you made okay. so much sense. And I, I'm going to point out a, a, a difference because I'm between two different counties, Amadeus. Mm-hmm. I actually live in Orange County, but I party in L.A. County. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you don't have this crap in Orange yeah. County. You just don't. I don't know, People, Tristan. No, I mean, Roxanne. No, I, I'm. <laughs> trust me, I'm, I'm out. I was just at Strut last night, mm-hmm. and we go out. We have a good time and there was just no drama you come to LA you go to West Hollywood and people just talk bad about other people and Mm -hmm. and I don't even know why like people don't even know who you are or Mm -hmm. maybe they met you a long time ago and had an interaction a long time ago say like or they heard a rumor about you years ago Yeah. yeah and they just talk bad every time that they see you and I, it makes me like scratch my head and I, I wonder why do people do that? Like, you know, I know a handful that just love talking bad about me and, and West Hollywood. I don't know. And Shit talkers will and, always be around. And I have absolutely no idea why I'm like, Oh my kid that I'm like, that was so 14 years ago and you're still talking about me. Right. That's you know? the thing, the tendency of those things. I don't know. Somebody, a good friend that we all know that's a lovely person once pointed out to me once I apparently had drama that a lot of people position. And I, I I, don't know, I don't have the neuron for that, even though I'm in entertainment, what, whatever the group is, that there's a lot of positioning. I'm so oblivious to it, That's I so guess. That's so high school. That is so immature. Yeah, I, I didn't have it in high school, and I don't have sisters, so my yeah. mom wasn't like that. I never had any kind of understanding that if your collateral or your currency is here because you dated this person, you have this house, or I, I have no fucking clue, um, that now we'll talk, now we won't, now we'll remember something from 14 years ago. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's mind boggling to me. I'd rather have somebody come in my face and, you know, tell me they think I'm shit and understand why. Yeah, I think they, they should be brave and come to our face and just say, let's clear the air. So every time I see you, I don't talk shit about you. Yeah. Because because really, when people talk bad about other people, it says more about them 
than it does about you because mm -hmm. I don't waste my time, breath or energy or even think about that person. But then I'll watch them literally point me out. And then whoever they're pointing me out to, that person will have like a reaction on their face. And I'm just like, I'm just yeah. thinking, I'm wondering, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad they're entertained. I really honestly could care less because hmm. I'm enjoying myself with my friends. But mm -hmm. it's just sad because in West Hollywood, it doesn't matter the age. In fact, I found that the older generation talks the most shit mm. than the younger generation, which it's I think the thing is, is you need to have something else in your life that's fulfilling you so you <laughs> don't pay attention to this shit, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, that's the ideal thing. Yeah. Um, so I was watching the news um, this morning, and I live in Marina Del Rey. And I was seeing one hor horrible story after another, like the news always is tried and true with. And I was, I don't know, I think the law of attraction, it says if you focus on something, you get more of it. Mm -hmm. So one horrible story after another, then it was talking about the collapse of the poor building mm -hmm. and, and those people in Florida. And then next thing I know, Marina Del Rey is on the news and everyone's freaking out about the towers in Marina Del Rey, which is, I'm oh. sitting in Marina Del Rey watching this going, oh my God, no way. <laughs> which towers? The, you know, the old city Marina Del Rey, uh, the circle towers that yes, have been there for yeah. so long. Well, now they're... Um, they're worried because those things ha need have major damage, and they don't want to um, end up like. Oh, and that is just very sad. Oh. What happened in Florida? And that was terrible. Yeah, Man, Marina that's... Del Rey. That they're trying to figure out. Okay, we got to make these repairs now, but it's just so damn expensive. Didn't the Menendez brothers live in those towers? <laughs> oh God, I don't know. <laughs> I think they do. I think I think I you're right. Think no, I do. think you're right. But I mean, but like so much weird stuff is happening in the news, like unfor that unfortunate incident, which is tragic in Terrible. Florida. Then you have Bill Cosby. Uh, yeah. uh, what the hell? I didn't that? even know uh, about that till her post and your response. I was like, what? I mean, That's like outrageous, outrageous, disgusting. And then, and then Britney Spears lost I know. her case. If that doesn't no! say what a woman's yes. worth it's is. Never. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, look at this, like Bill Cosby getting out on a technicality loophole. Oh, that's I outrageous. mean, I, I yeah. just... But he I, admitted to doing it. That's I the know, thing. I can't right. imagine the the support, the women that are supporting him, like uh, Felice, Felicia Rashad. Oh, my Rashad. God. I was mortified. First of all, why his wife stood by his side during this, Ugh. I don't understand. And then Felicia Rashad, you know, posting Unbelievable. On, like, like, now there's justice. Now there's justice. justice. Oh. Yeah, what justice? justice for what? Oh. Seriously? Oh my God, the <laughs> man... <laughs> Yeah, so many people, and it gets down to it. I mean, it's interesting with women, you know, and you go into that. They, uh, especially, you know, with this issue with women, when it gets down to it, they just, uh, I'd say they crumble somewhat. Some you know? women, yeah. And I mean, just the, the pain of those victims having to, and they put themselves through so much pain having to get on the stand and relive all that oh, stuff. I know. Oh, yeah, you know? for sure. So that was definitely... And he wasn't just taking advantage. He was planning it and putting something in um, his To over 60 people that That's we know of. shocking. I know, I know. Yeah. But you sit there and you go, like, here's a guy, very successful career. Very successful career, happily married, or at least mm -hmm. in appearances, a mm -hmm. family man. His two shows were about family yeah he sure pulled the wool over my family mm -hmm. and you know, he had to fight a lot of racism to get to where he was absolutely so <laughs> you'd sit there and you go dude nice what point. is what what like what is psychologically wrong with you you know it's just it's and then so, what, ha what happened to trump did trump get something oh his taxes now they're going through his business oh my agenda gosh. they're going not through his ta i don't know if it's taxes but they are going through his business deals well, hopefully, you know, I'm sure Bill Cosby had a really nice sell. Trump can just move in for a while. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I mean, I just feel that um, that the Me Too movement has made so much progress. And then you get to this and I guess they maybe the court like I don't know if there was lots of money involved, like another OJ sort of dream team. Of course, well, thing, the, well, the or, lawyer, his lawyer was on the OJ case. Right, but he was on something with Trump, too. With Trump, mm. yeah. Really? He got Trump out of something. But yeah. Gosh. Uh -huh. I don't know, but, but, but the way I understand it, the prosecuting, you know, that the prosecutors weren't supposed to use something that he said, but it's all a technicality because he already did it. But it was tied down, it. too, because he had a criminal case and a civil yes. case. Yes. And I think if he did something on one of them, it, it wasn't was supposed, supposed to, to happen, and it happened, mm -hmm. so a technicality, and he's out.
Yeah, I would say, I mean, you know, I'm not saying this with any like substantial proof behind it, but if you just go through history, because, you know, I'm a history freak and on shows about that, I mean, I mean, I sadly say, you know, Kel Surprise or what a a surprise, you know? I mean, when you can throw that much power over and over and over, there's one agenda, we will find a technicality. That's right. why we have to keep saying no. What, you know, it's just that's no. why they've got the, uh-huh. the expensive lawyers. That's what they do. It's not about yes. justice. No. Isn't it the most isn't it the most depressing thing when you've looked up to somebody in the media or maybe not looked up to, but really like they've seemed like a friend like Bill Cosby, you know, I mean, we all watched his show when I was growing up and the only person that didn't like him was my mom. She's like, I don't like this man. And I was like, why? And she's like, he makes himself a gynecologist, number one. And I just don't, <laughs> I just don't like him. And I was like, God, Is that what he was in the show. See, yeah. I didn't even pay attention to what he was. Oh my I'm like, mom, why do you have to rain on everything? But guess what? She was. Right. I, I never <laughs> watched the Cosby show. Oh, I, I, I never did. I never liked Bill Cosby. And then hearing shit about Michael Jackson is really sad, too, because I believe the kids. And, I you know, yeah, so do I, I, I just I think too. it's just so disheartening to um, a lot, people. hear these <laughs> these people yeah. like that you think are cool. And then the, you can't. I never will watch the Cosby show ever again. Ever, ever, ever. I ever still li- listen to Michael Jackson. Though. I do, too. OK, I that that is too. that is true. I if I am, him. to be honest, I mean, it's terrible that if I believed Michael Jackson to be the pedophile that he is, that I still listen to his songs. But then again, genius Genius can infiltrate evil people. Like, but think about it. Michael Jackson is like, a, I agree with you. I think he's a pedophile mm-hmm. too. That's a despicable person. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's who he is. But it doesn't. But his music. But his music is something completely. I know. Different. I know. I don't want to feel guilty now because I listen to his no. music because his music is coming from another. Well, I, mean, I, I don't, I'll disagree on that one. I call it the Roman Polanski. <laughs> really, what does that mean? I get myself in a shit ton of trouble for this. Uh, I mean, I'm not, and I'm not going to weigh in. I don't know, Michael, although I'll have to say it. I'm a songwriter and I very unpopular opinion. I'm going to be the unpopular person today, probably. I, he always creeped me out. So oh. well, that's not, a, that's not unpopular opinion. It was like, well, we want to give him these things, you know, uh, because his art stands above it. And that's how Cosby gets off. So that's all I've got to say. True. When, we, when we keep doing that, we keep doing that. And I don't want to put Michael Jackson, I don't want to put everybody's case of what they've done in the same thing. But when we keep exonerating, what does it mean about the person who has the same case that's, you know, picking grapes? Right. They've got how more money. Be- that's what it you means. Yeah. Because yes, I exactly. can't say that Bill Cosby's show was art. No. Yeah. No. It, well, it was exactly. very well done. No, I'm, I'm with you. It's the money. No, so. it wasn't. I mean, I don't even know if it was well done. I don't. I think, I think it if was. you. I think if you look at it, there's. I mean, it was I don't. Funny. No, but I don't think it was well done. I think it was groundbreaking, and I think yeah, that's what high. That's what it was all the because hype because it was about. a black family. Yeah. 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 A black family that black- actually had money and was a family. And it, yeah. was, middle and it was a professional family. middle class. Because, yeah, like, professional because middle if you class. look at all the other, I mean, okay, if you go back, you know, like Move Sanford, like the Jeffersons. <laughs> Jefferson. yeah, no, 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 I hold on. Them. Not about the Jeffersons, but like, but we're talking like Samford and Son. Yeah. And um, what's happening now? Yeah. It was yeah. always about that poor, struggling, yeah, yeah. you know, people of color. I mean, the Jeffersons wasn't. It was about. Wasn't that moving on? Up? Yeah. But it was about, you know, people mm-hmm. uh, that that was a groundbreaking show because yeah. it was about, you know, here, this you know African-American couple, you know, mm-hmm. who may has a lot of money now can afford this, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so that was not I, that was not a atypical black show. But all those other shows I and mean, you look at even the Mexican shows or the Latin what, shows. What ones were those? Uh, I don't know. I can't, I can't even think any. of any. But there were one. I mean, I know George Lopez, but I mean, there. But they always portrayed like the people that were white as that struggling yeah. class of people. That's true. They did. So you know, cause the Cosby Show truly was our generations mm-hmm. because the Jeffersons were our generation, but I was a kid. But it was like you know the first time that it was actually portrayed that they weren't poor people. Right. That he was a Kind of college. <laughs> I know oh, she was wow. a lawyer. Which, by the way, I didn't even realize that. But he was a professional. You know what I mean? Wow. And I think did she work? The, yeah, the, she's a lawyer. She, she was kidding. a lawyer. Okay, she was so, a lawyer. He was a gynecologist. The kids oh were God. great. 
Kind of. You know, well, Lisa Bonet. Lisa Bonet is gorgeous. Yeah, but Lisa Bonet was the wayward child, yeah. you know? Yeah. But, um, and now Raven <laughs> Simone, when she was on the show and she was a baby girl, like three years old, and now right. she's gayer than gay. <laughs> Yay! I had, I had Yay. no idea she was gay. <laughs> I, I, I was like surprised that she was gay. I didn't see that one coming. But then again, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, so, but I think, like, I hear what you're saying, Amadeus. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, for me, it's kind of, and I hear exactly, but it's like, you know, I mean, should we stop then listening to Michael? No, I mean, Jackson? I, know. You know, I can't help it. I do. I'm going to have the unpopular <laughs> opinion <laughs> here. I I just, I don't know if I believe it. I, I think Michael Jackson was a nice guy who tried doing nice things. And I think the parents wanted to take advantage of that to get money from him. Uh, look, I would say Fair that enough. I'd like to agree with you, but I heard about, um, I saw this thing about one of the boys describing a birthmark that he has on his ding dong. How would he know that? Do you mean penis, my dear? Yes. <laughs> okay. I did hear about that. How would he? Know, how would the kid know this? He could have got a glimpse somehow if mm. he was changing. Look, the whole thing, the whole pedo, because it's it's a pedo. For me, mm-hmm. it's like a pedophile ring. Mm-hmm. You've got a guy who has an issue, a pote- an alleged issue. Okay. He preys on children. Okay. If it's true. If it's true, that's what mm-hmm. I said. Allegedly. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he preys on children. The kids that he was preying on were kids that he gifted things to. Again, the poor people's kids. So, But yet Macaulay Culkin swears everyone. that he never and experienced I'm gonna, any of that And I'm going to probably tell you he probably didn't. But I'm talking about there were other kids that came that were unfortunate kids. Target. Targets. Targets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know. Who knows? Maybe they took advantage. I mean, again, we don't know. Maybe they t- he took advantage of the kid. Maybe his parent. Maybe the parents didn't purposely go pimp them out. Maybe he did didn't. But maybe. Who knows? But who knows? Because it, it could go anywhere. Yeah, but maybe. I wish it. that Michael Jackson wasn't that way. I'd like to believe what you believe. I mean, he was I not. Know. Look, I, I probably I don't know if anyone met him or worked with him, but I have. Now, you met Michael? Oh God! Oh yeah. my gosh! Okay. Um, he amazing. Was, he was um a, he was a quiet soul. Um, he was very shy, mm. but the people around him were not very nice people. They were ex- highly protective of him and they were assholes. Well, his father was an asshole. Well, so, I'm talking about know. even his bodyguards. I yeah. mean, everybody that stemmed right. from his, his camp. Right. I mean, you know, it, he had a CBS special. Okay. Mm-hmm. I work on those things. Yeah. yeah. I'm supposed to be there. It's mm-hmm. my job. I hired a photographer. What's a photographer's job supposed to do is to photograph what's going on. So mm-hmm. we're sitting, waiting. We see, you know, we're watching the rehearsal, and it comes time to tape it because it's a, it was a, it was taped to air later. All of a sudden, my photographer literally gets up, goes to walk. Now, mind you, again, it's not like we just showed up. There were memos. There were conversations. There were meetings. You know. We had to pass probably some sort of freaking tests or whatever. He gets up to shoot, and a, a like a big bodyguard person mm-hmm. like literally came, ripped him, and she was shoving him away. I'm yeah. sorry. Who the f- I don't give a shit who Michael Jackson is. Right. You mm-hmm. don't fucking manhandle manhandle people and think that right. you have that power that you can fucking do it. And at that point, I thought, you know what? And that's where the whole later on the pedophilia thing came in is they created this thing Mm -hmm. where Michael Jackson could do no wrong. And he probably paid a lot of people off. Mm -hmm. He probably paid a lot of people off. And you know what? When you are down and out, and I'm not saying I would do it, but we can't judge people. When you are down and out and, you know, you're this guy, which is a disgusting thing, did something to your kid. And he wants to shut your fucking mouth, but he's going to give you a million dollars. Okay. And I'm not saying this is right, Mm -hmm. but none of us on this panel have ever been poor. We don't know what it's like. Absolutely not. Yeah. Okay. So when you look at something and there, and and an injustice happened, who are we? And they took the money to make their life better. 
even at the expense of what happened. Who are we to judge to mm, say that's I wrong? I still judge. I you still say that's wrong. Story. You can never know anybody's story. And that to me, and you know, being in entertainment is, you know, it's more, lo- there's so many stories like this. I mean, I had a lot of trouble getting paid because of Scientology, because I've been behind the group that did Beck and manhandlers would come and Beck would try to talk to me. And who's you know, Beck? Oh, Beck, the singer? Yeah. Uh-huh. Beck was into Scientology. He is yes. a Scientologist. Oh, I never did. knew that. Oh my, that's so sad. He didn't fucking, and I'll say that. Admit it. Well, I'm saying it, and I'm on the label, and I'm doing it, and I'm having people that, you know, don't want to believe it, saying no, he's not. I'm like, yes, he is, because he didn't want to, and that's a whole, that's a topic for a long time. I've got my shit in a lot of trouble for talking, but I don't care I don't about it. That's another that's fascinating subject. Yeah, 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 it is. is. The handlers would come and remove him. He would say, how are you? And the, you'd be flanked by people. Like, I can't, if I had a video, it sounds improbable, you know, to people that live in Illinois. You Scientology, know? as you said, Cara, is a whole nother bag of worms, as, and I agree. And it's it sounds like the biggest, scariest cult um and and terrorist like it is it's domestic well i mean it's our opinion everyone you're watching between the sheets here on um the night of broadcasting network that 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 that. i'm like so for columbia there's so much we have to talk about (laughs) call us 323-524-2599 323-524-2599 we have a caller All right. We're, no, <laughs> by the way, Mara is not doing any psychic, any psychic readings tonight. She did so good. So we're going. So we're going to check to see if this caller is, wants a psychic reading okay. from Shar Margolis, whose show is on Who, before, before us, us, or or if I should. No, you're not going not to do step it. in. You're not doing it. Okay, Tony. Hi everyone. Hi. How are we? How are you doing? This is between the sheets, not a psychic show. Do you have a question? Who? What's your name? Uh, this is Julie Ampini. I called to you, uh, I don't know, a, a couple of months ago, a few months ago, um, about my idea to help other business owners who are facing cancer. Yes. And, um, I'm, I'm doing it. You are. That's, That's amazing. wonderful. Thank, so what? Thanks for the encouragement. Well, you're welcome. That was, we between the sheets like to encourage. We like to say, practice what we preach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us what's going on. What like what happened? Just br- briefly tell us how it came about, and and then tell us about your success. Um. Well, I talked to some different uh, nonprofits who help people with cancer, and um, so I'm kind of learning things about that and meeting people. And um, then, as I've been talking about this, I ran into a couple of podcasts. Um, people who are interested in this sort of in-between things, it's not the same as, you know, it's health and it's business, and those are supposed to be separate, right? Right. No, they're not really, and we all know that now. But, uh, so, yeah, that's what's happening so far. Well, congratulations. I'm so 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 wonderful for you. Congrats. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited. You know, people uh, seem to really feel like it helps. (laughs) That's really nice. Well, I mean, but that's the thing. I think, you know, and, and I think Amadeus, we've had many discussions, but I mean, I think, you know, people, I think fear, I'm not saying this is in your case, okay, but I think people have great ideas. <clears throat> and I think people sometimes think, you know, when they have an idea, for it to come to fruition, it's like, you know, someone, and they don't have connections or they don't have this. It's kind of like, <clears throat> you look at it as like, Putting, pulling up a boulder up a mountain. Mm-hmm. And I think it's difficult because, you know, then you, you don't get the, you don't know how to do it or you don't get the support or whatever. And I think so many wonderful ideas, whether, whatever it is, I think it falls just on the wayside because I think, you know, people get crestfallen, you know, yeah. because they okay. can't, <clears throat> because yeah. they don't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. They have an idea. They don't know how to do it. And, in you know, in the world, we also don't have a lot of people that are, I don't know, above board. So, you know, you tell someone about an idea and then tomorrow the it's know. their idea. But it's on CBS. <clears throat> but Ju- is it Julian? Julie? Julian? Yeah. Yeah, Julianne. Julianne, the fact that you um, you must have had something driving within you that said this is something I'm willing to put time and investment in and go beyond any fear. W- wasn't that the because, reason? Because it's about fear. Don't you, did, did you think 
you were sort of hesitant, Julianne, because of fear a little bit in the beginning? Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I kind of still am off and on, but, you know, every time I go to do something new, but, but you know, the reality is that I looked back and realized when things happened um, that I was a part of, it was because I did it anyhow, not because mm-hmm. I was perfect or right. You, know, you did it anyhow. That's that's huge. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Exactly. That's exactly yes. what you're supposed right, to do. Right. Yeah. Not go for perfection. Yeah. That can stop me at times. Oh, you me know? too. Oh, yeah. The plan and then, uh, no, it's just, just go. <laughs> Well, I'm so happy. I'm really happy. And, you know, keep calling. I mean, you know, keep, you know, I'm just so happy for you and, and proud of you for stepping up and following your passion and not, and not like sort of succumbing to the fear or any obstacles that may have come into it. It's, it's great to be tenacious. So um, keep us posted on how things develop. And, you know, between the sheets, we'll support anything that you do. Um, so thank you so much for calling us and giving us a recap and a success story. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Nice one. You bet. Can I put something in the comments for, for Absolutely. Later? Absolutely. Totally. Wonderful. Thank you. Have a good bye. night. Thank have you. You too. So what are your guys' plans for the floors? Bye. bye. Oh bye. I'm going to go to the America <laughs> Fest at the Rose Bowl because they have the best fireworks on the West Coast. The what? Wow, okay. What is what that? is it? I didn't think they were doing that. So Amer- America Fest at the Rose Bowl. I never heard of it. What yeah. is it? The, oh my gosh! It's an, an entire show. It's going to be like I motocross. It's going to be singers, uh, big like I saw like it a couple years ago. It was really carnival. good. Mm-hmm. Well, wait, who who are the singers? Oh, I don't. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it's anyone. Cher, I think is. I'm like I know. <laughs> Cher, Madonna, Lady Gaga. You know, like like I, I love the way that she led with it. Oh, there's motocross. <laughs> motocross singers carnival like, wow the, the radio stations are going to be there like it sounds everyone important so is be there. midwest to me but <laughs> let's get some apple pie i'm you sure they some apple pie. wow midwest fun <laughs> no come on i like people in the midwest don't you I yeah i do because you they're nice it. yeah <laughs> never been but no, have, but I'm sorry. When you lead with motocross, motocross is that uh, truck. I know what right? it is. I'm wondering. I'm asking. Is it's it like that mon- truck it's thing? Like yeah. that, that motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and, then, what, and then when are they pulling out the monster truck? Is that the big finale? <laughs> no. <laughs> they have like singers. <laughs> they have they, just, they have an entire show like starting at six thirty. It'd be fun. And then it's the it's the best fireworks show on the West Coast. Yeah. I had wow. No idea. Whoa. Oh, Wowzer. Yeah. Okay, Anne, are you doing something for the fourth? I have three parties to go to. Oh. Um, three. But what are you watching you fireworks? Have contrary to popular belief, or contrary to belief, I am quite popular. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Say it. Um, but... No, I've got three parties. I don't know how I'm going to do it, and I probably will not. I probably will... Wow. I probably will go to one and then, you know, stay there, and then, like... I don't drink, so it's not like, mm-hmm. although I have to tell you what, oh my God, I have to tell you all what happened on Saturday after that Mex Mecca party. What happened? <laughs> all right. So I'm there. I don't drink, okay? I had two watered down margaritas because that's what they were serving. And, um, and you know, and but we were up in the roof and it was hot. Yeah, at least I was standing in the heat. So oh, it was so hot when we went to, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, It's okay, but no. so I like it was, I think I left at six, six thirty. I don't remember. I, you know, I'm, I walk down to the car and I'm waiting for I give my little ticket and I didn't feel well. So, I, okay, this is TMI, but I don't give a shit. So I went to the bathroom and I'm thinking, what's going on? I mean, I, so I, of, of course, you know, I don't have a problem with this anymore. I shoved my fingers after I hand sanitize, I shoved my <laughs> fingers down my throat because <laughs> I'm thinking, but, but as I'm doing this, I'm like, but I only had two margaritas in a four hour, five hour time span, but I just, and nothing came out. Okay. So then I get in my car and I have the wherewithal to go, you know what? I can't drive. I can't mm-hmm. drive. So I called a friend of mine who lives a few blocks away and I'm like, look, I can't drive. Can I come to your place? And she's like, fine. So I got to her place, but it was, I was kind of like disoriented. It was the weirdest shit, man. And then I get to her place and I immediately said, I'm going to try and throw up again. So I went in the bathroom. 
did the whole finger thumb thing. A little bit came up, but not so much. But what? I just felt so out of sorts. I, I had chills. Do you think there was something in your... Either... Look, that's what... When I'm... did they let Bill Crosby out? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> So it could have been a sunstroke. That's yeah. That's it was a heat stroke because a heat stroke. It was a heat stroke because what I ended up doing because then I was getting my friend because it was so weird because my friend like one of her friends that she hadn't seen in a while and I never met they were actually just hanging and I felt bad and I'm thinking you know and 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 they were going to go out to dinner and I'm like look I mean just I'm so sorry I crashed your party but I just couldn't drive so they went out to dinner and I literally I mean you know when I actually did vomit for real I have to tell you I don't know I don't know when's the next time I'm going to drink because going down it's fine going up is the most disgusting thing ever it just tastes horrible and so I laid on her bed that by the way ever my whole life Neither have I. Okay. Can, Never been it. sick on alcohol ever. Well, thank not, God. This would be like the second time, but it was some, because then I was getting when I was sleeping in you know I was sleeping in her house while they were out. I was getting chills and I had a headache. Did you think you might have COVID or something? No, I didn't think I have a COVID. <laughs> COVID. I mean, well, maybe like no, some sort. No, no, the COVID doesn't just come on that quickly. Yeah. This was just so weird. I was like fine and then not, yeah. and then you know, and then you know, I got up midway and I, I drank some water and she had some ginger ale, so I was hydrating myself and I felt I was feeling better. Then the headache went away, so I knew it was probably a little bit of a heat stroke. Yeah. And then when you know, and they came back home, and you know, and then I was like, when they came back to when they came back to my friend's house, I'm in the kitchen and I'm like cooking, <laughs> and they're like, I love it. I'm like, I'm just cooking. They go, she goes, well, we brought you something from Aroma Cafe, which is not my favorite. I just don't yeah. like it. And I said, like what? I said Fussy that was lesbian. Yes. I know. How about saying thank you? I said no. I said <laughs> thank you. No, I did say thank you. I said how thank you. How kind. What did you know? You know what did you get? Because you know I am picky with food. And she bought me a tuna melt. I'm going to tell you, at that point, that was the last thing I wanted. <laughs> <That is> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. That no. is so not the right thing to avoid. No. No. No, French fries would have been good. Yeah. Much better. But I was, French fries, soak it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I was, I mean, look, I'm grateful. I have really good friends. Cause, not that she wasn't going to say don't come, but she thought she was thoughtful. But I just didn't. And then it was so funny because I'm like chopping up. She had like some meat and things. So I'm like, all right, tomorrow I'm coming over because I didn't have dinner tonight. So tomorrow I'm coming over and I'm making quesadillas. And she's like, all right. And, you know, whatever. But that was the weirdest thing. I, I've never had sunstroke. I, but, but it's so funny. So I walked in that night to my house. I think I got home at around 11. Um, and my mother was still up, my lovely 89-year-old mother. And she's sitting up and she says, oh, I thought you were going to be home early. I said, mom, this is what happened. She said, you know, exactly what Cara said. <laughs> Are you sure no one slipped you something? Yeah. And I'm like, well, first of all, I said, well, first of all, mom, I had the glass in my hand. I danced with it. I walked with it. You know, it's like, I, I, I know it was a heat stroke. Yeah. You but, wouldn't have recovered that fast if uh, somebody slipped something. Yeah. Right. That's true. So alcohol, alcohol and sun, no, you got to hydrate prior. Yeah. It takes forever after. Yeah. Well, yeah, I realized at that point that I hadn't even eaten all day. Oh, that too. Of oh, course. Oh. Of course. <laughs> well, you, yeah, that'll do it. Mara and I were at that same rooftop but the, the next the day. next day <laughs> the boy party and yeah we, we got the wrong tickets but it, it was so fun you but, did not get their hold on i know you did not <laughs> you know they're trying fun. to play it off these two bitches they think they're younger than me and they think they're in the know they don't know shit <laughs> no I'm i never here. said i know anything i, I did what, what mara we're said we're sitting here <laughs> I mean, I said, why are you guys going on Sunday? It's a boys' party. I said, no, it isn't. There's so many more people RSVP to this party, and Gan's like, no, it's, it's a, a gay, it's a gay boys' party. And she was right. But let me tell you, it was so super fun. Uh, not for me. How? I I got there and left right after. <laughs> no, I know, but I was there like a lot longer before you. Yeah. And I made sure I I felt the heat. I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. I, and I calculated the sun, oh, the position where it was awful. going to be. So what? I chose a table right where I knew a half an hour more the sun would be going down, and that would be shade. I was kicking it in the shade. Mm. I had the, my the, water. When I got there, there was a sliver of shade, and it was miserable. <laughs> it was there was just, I was I spent forty dollars to get in. I was so mad, and oh. then I bought a useless <laughs> drink ticket. That by the way, I still have the ticket in my wallet. And I'd really like my money back, Chad. If you're listening, <laughs> yeah, no, they're not going to give it to you because we sucked. had six tickets. But I met so many people. Um, I was sitting in the shade. I met so many people. We had, I think, like 10 of us at the Abbey. 
We all left because Mara was hungry. So we and all... hot and, <laughs> and just disgusted. So we all left, went to the Abbey. Yeah. And, and it was great. We were just strangers that met. And we had a oh gay my... old time. No, and it's, it was you know wonderful. What? You it's always not. seem to have fun. I, I, I don't. Do. I'm, I no, don't have Amara fun. Mara comes in and Mara goes, mm, this is Mara. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes me look like I'm snobby. I go in and I'm no, like, No, 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 you're assessing. You're not snobby. Yeah. It's that look that you get when you're assessing. What is that? I don't know. It's this look. You do. You, ha you, you have, have a look. look. You just and probably it's not... dis uh, probably unfiltered disappointment. That's what it is. Yeah. It's not, it's like, <laughs> mm, yeah. I come in and I'm like, <laughs> I'm out of here. You yeah. Know? I don't know. I have to say that the the um I'm 46 years old in a half and the gay scene is just not interesting to me anymore. I, I just don't belong there. I just, I don't resonate with it. Do you mean for girls and, well, and boys or just boys? Any boys party scene. scene. I'm just, I, first of all, there, somebody put a post up the other day. I, it was just today about how at my age, when things start at 10 p.m., you're like, or they say, come here at 10, you're like in the night. Like for me, <laughs> I'm just, I'm not, I, I'm over it. I'm over going out and partying. Oh, late night partying. I, I'm old, and I remember back in the day when I was 18 and 19, 20, we used to, st it didn't start, nothing, we didn't go out of the house till 10. 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. No, 10, no. You know, but I can't started. do it anymore. I mean, I don't no. mind it. I mean, you know, it's weird for me to like to have the, oh, we have another caller. I'll oh. Continue. Hello, hello. Hello. Well, hey. Hello. Welcome to Between Hi, the Sheets. Leanne hello, Leanne Wilson. How hey, are you? Man. Welcome. <laughs> I got through. Thank God. You guys are glorious. And I'm listening to your comments. I agree. It's, it's, it's rough getting older in June Pride. Mm, thank you. Well, but it's... <laughs> I, don't I know. disagree because I'm around the same age as Mara. Yeah. And you just I could party out for it more. Yeah. all night. Like, I could... Well, you know, I look. Here's the, uh, I don't. I... Let's see. Nine, how old was I in 1999? Someone do the math. You are 11 years older than me. Uh, so, so in 1999, I was. How, I'm, I'm 57. <laughs> so how old was I in 1999? I don't know. Get a you calculator. You were probably like <laughs> you were probably like 31, 32. Betty. Was I in my 30s? Yeah, in the 30s. Early 30s. All right, that's when I started as the VP. Of, and that's when I started in Gay Pride. Okay, mm -hmm. and of course it was my 30s. Still, I didn't realize it was 30s. Well, okay. Um, but I then I, I I was there all the way through 2010. Okay, and that was like I don't know what. How many years ago? Ten years ago. You stuck with it. Ten years ago. I'm exhausted. So I'm. Fi I was fifty. I mean, Tell me about 50. it. Me too. I was so charged yeah, by. I, it. I have a location I want to tell you about. Yeah. But, I, which I promised you. And yes. I haven't signed on the dotted line yet, but I had to call in. Yes. I promised you get the exclusive, and I actually got two more LA from my neighbor, who's a musician that knows Mick Jagger's. Wow. Daughter. So Jade? I, I'm freaking out. Are we right talking now. about or Jade Bianca. or Bianca? Uh, hey, is it Jade you know, huh? <laughs> yes. Now, how bizarre yes, is it that we can sit there and automatically say, <laughs> is it Jade or is it Bianca? Or oh, 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 Paris. Or Paris. As if we're part of the family. Like we know these people intimately. Well, they're celebs. Know they're celebs. Again, I promised you, Gay you're going to get the exclusive. We're so damn close. And it is going to be July 10th. And I just, I listen to you ladies with the banter and the fun. And I'm so happy to be able to call in. And I didn't get a busy signal. I just <laughs> got right to you That's girls. That's awesome. Yeah, baby. Um, if I may, I swear, I'm going to text you, Gay. And okay. As soon as I sign the contract. So you All right, but is it, is it in like, West Hollywood? In L.A. Well, no, there's a difference. Oh, are there's we talking West about Hollywood, Leanne's club? Leanne's no, club. Okay. So no, either it's, it's West Angeles. Hollywood or it's LA. Los Angeles. Okay. That's all I can give you right now. But I promise. Thank you for taking my call. No, you're welcome. Thanks and for thanks calling for, in. You know, thanks for yeah. also trying to put something on right. for women. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Bye. 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 I'm just happy with my cat, you know, in Golden Girls. <laughs> Real wild Friday night. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what to say right now. Oh my god, I was at Strut No See. I'm gonna be at the rooftop at W two. I know. Tonight. I'm, I'm gonna I'm go to Strut going. tomorrow night. I'm gonna be at America Fest Sunday. Like I you know Give me the th Hallmark This channel. is my mentality. <laughs> this is the my mentality. You only live once. Like you'll rest yeah. when you die. Yeah. We are here yeah. to have a physical experience, so have it. <laughs> I you know just what? hate it there. <laughs> I hate it at those things. But I mean, but it's, it, you know, well, first of all, let's start with one thing. Yes. The whole scene in our, I don't give a 
for heck where you live. And that's even the straight club scene and the gay. It's all superficial. It's all about to be seen. Mm, I guess. It is. Not no scene. Well, plot, a lot of people drink, well, and I'm not a drinker. Well, so. but that too. I don't drink. No, but you don't I drink. know, but you love going out and mingling. Because yeah, you know, I, I love drink, meeting okay. people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like all that horrible, loud music that oh, just I know. is impossible. Ugh. I Can't like it. it. I love hearing music. I love being in the atmosphere, meeting people, hearing the music, and getting my my photography, my photograph taken. Like, I love it. Well, you, I just love it. You are because night could, owl. You have could, the night owl in you. No, because she's an ego whore. Oh, my um, God. So, she has nothing not. to do with an ego. Oh, my God. Hi, I'm Tristan. <laughs> Hi, no. take my picture. No. I'm going to post 20 photos of I mean, really? Look at me! I know, but isn't she adorable? Right? I'm not saying. Come on. <laughs> I'm not. I. But don't. That's fucking, not why she goes out, though. Fuck. That's not why I go. Why out. you go out? She, she actually fun. loves it. I, she loves it. I love meeting new people. Well, look, I think we all do. <laughs> I do. I mean, I do too. I'm not. I'm not. I'm a social. I think we all are social. Are oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, yeah. it won't be the first time. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to make it all astrology, but I mean, you're like you're like a walking textbook for being an Aries, right? On this, I'm a quadruple ADHD Aries. I'm Aries yeah. Sun, you Moon, need, Venus, need, and Mercury. Festivals, you need, you know. Yeah, I mean, and I'm ADHD. Right. So you know, but can I be introverted and spiritual during the week in Orange County and go to my sound bath meditations? Yes, that's me. Yes. But then I have the other Let side loose. where I come out with my friends mm -hmm. and and just and live. Then, look, I don't mean to put it down. It's just I just don't I don't um, like it. But it's nothing wrong with it. It's just not for me. <laughs> All right, how many Golden Girls were there? Four. Four. All right. So Mara, here we go. Yes. <laughs> hey. Okay, if you if, I know there's four of us, so there'll be a repeat. Uh -huh. Okay. If you had to describe who which which golden girl we are in personality. Oh my god, uh -huh. she's Blanche. I'm Blanche. <laughs> she's Blanche Devereaux. <laughs> but I have a little Sophia smart ass in me though. Just no, saying. you can only you're, have one. You, but you're I'm Blanche. Blanche. You can only have one. You're Sophia. I'm <laughs> Dorothy. You're Ro Rose, I guess. Although she Rose, Rose, you know, I could be Rose too because Rose is very naive and stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so she's very, very bumpkin. Well, 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 what about Amadeus? Nice. Wait a minute, what about Amadeus? Which yeah. I don't know. I don't. Be... I would say Dorothy because I don't know very well. I, uh, yeah, Amadeus. Yeah. The irony of my life is, you know, I have film degrees and I know uh, the creators of it, and I do shows of them, but I have no fucking clue which one. Oh my I god! Be. You know, B. Oh, Arthur so. is just she just makes that show. Lesbian. Lesbian. Yeah, when I was little, yeah, I guess people watched the Brady Bunch, and I begged I my didn't. mother to watch Brady Bunch a mod. Oh, I never watched Maud. You never my, did? No, but everyone's telling me she's fantastic in that. She and was in the wonderful. Day. You know, yes. I never watched Maud. But I heard Maud. that that that's where she gets you know, the slamming door thing. Yes, and yeah. she also had, again, she, she was a very, I, I, I worked on, I didn't work on the Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. But when the Golden Girls got canceled on NBC, CBS mm -hmm. picked it up and we called it the Golden Palace. Yes, I remember. That was me. Yeah. Um, with and with uh, Rue McClanahan. With Rue McClanahan. Uh, the, oh, um, it was everybody. Estelle Getty. It was everybody. Yeah, everyone Except but her. for B. B. Arthur. Yeah. Um, but she did make, we did do two episodes with her. And they brought in Cheech Marin. From Cheech and Chong. Oh, he's so fun. He was the like the desk clerk in this oh, yes, hotel. Yes, yes. And um, I remember well, well when B came on, she was really kind of like because it's like oh my god, Maud, you know, and yeah, I never yeah, met yeah. her before. She was very tall. She's very tall, and oh, right. she oh, was she was very tall, and she was not the most warmest. No, fuzzy I heard person. That she's Just not. Really she like, wasn't. Wham. She didn't like Rose. She didn't no, like Betty White. They hated yeah. Betty White because she really? thought because mm -hmm. she thought Betty White was too fucking Pollyanna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but I have to say, when Maud was on, the, she came out with a fashion trend. What was that? Right. It was those pants. Those pants with those long calf the pants. Long Right. A oh, long cat. Right. Okay. Yeah, but that wasn't that wardrobe who came up with it. It wasn't B. No. Well, she had something to say oh, about it. Oh, she did. It. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, it, she. Yeah. this is what she used to wear. Mm -hmm. So that she wanted to be comfortable. And it <laughs> kind of, they all sort of, it sort of, sort of gelled. I should start watching Maude. Who was her daughter? Anybody who played her daughter? I don't know because oh, I never watched I it. I see her face. Come I on, come on. I know Rue McClanahan was also Adrian on that show. Barbo. Adrian Barbo. Yeah. That's kind of, uh, 
I don't know any shows. I was so little, but I'd never, yeah. because I grew up in the Midwest and I didn't see Italians and Jews and my family was lippy and from LA. And they'd say, you know, that fucking asshole, you know, and whatever, have opinions. So I saw, <laughs> saw this woman doing that, you know? And I said, mommy, you know, that's the only thing I would watch. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I, I mean, I rem what was the one, I think it was all, no, not all in the family, but the one where um, she played, where uh, uh, Carol Burnett played Eunice. Oh, oh Mama's Family. Mama's fa I love yes, that, that show. that was a great one. I love I that I mean, one. Carol Burnett, Thank God she's still alive. But I know she is amazing. I sure and is. I've, and 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 I've, I of course I'm that old. I've worked with her, and I'll never forget. I was at CBS, and um, they were revamping the Carol Burnett show. Oh yeah, no, that was in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Nineties, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And I just started CBS, and I remember meeting her for the first time, and like literally. Not a lot of people. I mean, usually I'm like, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you, Gam, blah, 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 blah. But there are some iconic figures mm -hmm. that really, like, impressed me. I was in awe of growing up. And she was one of them. And mm -hmm. I'll never forget when mm -hmm. I was introduced to her. I was really nervous. And her publicist named Greg, and he was gay, um, but he passed from AIDS. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but he's like, and he knew I was gay. She, he said, she loves us. She loves us. She loves us. Like our people. She loves our people. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I remember being introduced to her. And I think I said, you know, it's, I, I didn't want to like be stupid because I'm a professional. So I didn't want to like fall over myself to be like fangirl. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't know what I said. And then she goes, well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Gay Ann. I swear to God. And I went home that night because there was no cell phones. Okay. Yeah. Um, and my mother didn't have a beeper. Um, and so I remember getting home and calling my mother. It was like, God knows what time at night. And she's like, what do you want? Everything okay? And I'm like, Carol Burnett said my name. <laughs> <laughs> she said my name. Oh. Yes. And literally I've known Carol for since 1991, maybe mm -hmm. 1992. I can't remember two years ago. Well, it'd be three years ago because 2020 didn't happen. No, didn't so three that. years ago. Yeah. Um, I, her, I, I saw that she, I work on a show called the talk and one of the, my shows and her name came up as being the guest. So I texted her manager and I said, is she going to be on the lot? I'd love to say hi. Cause it's been a while. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh my God, she'll, she can't, she'd love to see you again. And I'm thinking, really? Like, you know, they always say that like they let you see. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Yeah. But when I went and I knocked on the door and I opened up and she said, Oh my God, Gay Ann Bruno. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, she goes, you're still here. I said, I am. I am. I get that reaction from all these people. Like, <laughs> you're like, still even, here. Like Candace Bergen, like when the Murphy Brown re reunion came back or whatever the hell we did. And I said, don't tell Candace I'm working on the show. And we did some of the stuff in LA. So I told her publicist, Heidi, mm -hmm. don't tell Candace. So when I knocked on the makeup door and she said, come in. I opened the door and she looked at me. She goes, Gay and Bruno. Now she's a little bit more flowery than Carol Burnett. She's not that much of a Can lady. Candace. Candace. She goes, Oh my God, you're fucking still here. <laughs> and my response to her was, Oh my God, you're still fucking alive. <laughs> Candace Bergen was gorgeous. She back was in the day. stunning. Yeah. She gorgeous. Was stunning. So is Sybil. Sybil, I worked oh. with her too. And her daughter, Clementine. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Who was gay and now is not gay. But yeah. still, it doesn't gorgeous. matter, but gorgeous. But I mean, but like this town, you know, like going out and partying and stuff like that. Meeting think... celebrities can be super jarring. Like I, I, I didn't know what to say. I was jarred when I met somebody in Who'd a couple you meet? years ago. Well, at the movie theater of all places, Gwen Stefani and Blake and their kids were in the same movie as I was. A couple rows behind me. Um, we went to go see Fro my sister and I went to go see Frozen Two. <laughs> oh, you know, sausage. Uh, yeah, I know a sausage, huh? What does that mean? It's just a, a dim. Okay, a dim. so we we went and um and lo and behold fucking Gwen Stefani is sitting two rows behind me and I I have uh, grown up with her influence um ever since I was I mean she's 5 years older than me um she's from Anaheim and I was grow I grew up in Orange County but I was so nervous afterwards when I went up because there was nobody around I didn't want to be one of those starstruck people I didn't want to ask her for her autograph I didn't want to take a picture with her 
But I, I couldn't even look at her. But she was standing by herself waiting outside the men's room. And I just went up to her and I said, I just want to tell you I love you. <laughs> said, oh. thank you for your talent and your passion, your music, and your inspiration. And then she's like, aw, sweet. That's sweet. And I just ran. <laughs> I ran. And the funniest thing is this other girl was there, and she comes up with her camera. She's holding out the camera to Gwen. And Gwen, Gwen looks at her, and she goes, could you take a picture of me? Uh, you know, so she, she didn't want one with Gwen. She wanted Gwen to take her picture against a backdrop. What? No. I don't think she knew who she, she was. I was going to say, was. I don't think yeah, she Yeah, I don't think she knew fabulous. that she was talking to Gwen. That's Isn't that funny? funny. Wow. Well, I mean, you know, look, they are real. They're just normal people. And, you know, and I, I, and you look, know, anyone who works with them, you sort of get jaded in a way, you know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, it's such and such. And it's so funny because I, I mean, like I said, I've worked with them a lot and I'm, there's only very few people now that will like, jar you, that will jar me. Yeah. Um, but you know, I do find it kind of sweet when you know there is a celebrity and someone does come up and says that i think if i was a celebrity i mean i would probably spend so much time talking to people and not even give a shit that i was a celebrity mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. because you you have to be respectful of the people that are buying your your records or or watching your movies i mean i you know i, I guess you can get inundated but i don't know and and some are nice and trust me some are not some or not. No, I know. I mean, I didn't. I was so scared to approach Gwen, and I couldn't even look her in the eye. I was scared shitless, and I. I mean, I don't remember the whole thing. I don't even remember her, her expression or anything because I could barely look at her. She was one of those that I've always wanted to meet, uh, just because I. You and know, you did, and I did, but I. I, I wish. What <laughs> outside the lose. Yeah. Yeah, I just wish that I had been more present because I felt like I don't want to bother her. You know, I don't want to be that person. Well, it's kind of freaky. I mean, you know, it's kind of freaky to meet somebody that's a celebrity because you don't know and you don't want to come off looking like a jerk. Yeah, it's or, you know. fine I don't want to invade her personal space, right. you know. You don't want to seem like you don't care and you're not impressed. You don't want to seem like you don't even know who they are. Right. I don't care, dear. Because that's, that's rude as well. It's yeah. a really difficult one, I think. Did you guys hear... I just heard the funniest story. I think it was, yeah, it was Dave Matthews. So <laughs> this girl was on her way to a Dave Matthews. Did you hear this? She's no. on her way to a Dave Matthews concert. She passed this uh, biker on the road who had stopped and uh, had a flat tire and stopped to help him. And it turns out it was Dave Matthews. Ah! Yeah. So she got all the backstage pass. Can you imagine how ironic and, and what are the chances of that? It's called manifestation. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. Manifestation is a great thing. So I'm manifesting the Sharon Stone calls me and ask me oh yeah date. Okay. have you met her <laughs> i've kissed her <gasps> wow that's more than met that is naughty that's that's in, that's crazy I, it was at gay pride and um joan jet i hired joan oh. jet to perform for me Another that year nice. and i get a call saying i mean it wasn't a makeout kiss i mean for me it was a kiss and it, it could have been a makeout kiss i didn't care it was like we locked lips Amazing. and um I get a call from her publicist, her assistant, I can't remember, saying, Sharon Stone wants to come to see Joan Jett. Mm. And I said, sure. I said, you know, she goes, but she doesn't want to stand in the gay pride crowd. I said, no problem. I got this row in the front. That's the mosh pit. You know, I'll, I'll make sure she's there. And then she wanted to um, announce her on the stage. And I said, sure, sure. Oh, my God, Sharon Stone. Oh, my God, yes. So she gets in. And, you know, she walks in and I, I, you know, I get a call and it's like, hi, how are you? And I'm like trying to play it off like, hi, yeah, so nice to meet you. And meanwhile, my heart's like, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. <laughs> and so um, I said, you know, do you want to meet Joan now? Because she never met Joan yet. She said, mm -hmm. can, do you want to meet Joan now or after? She goes, no, I'll wait after the show. She goes, but, but Gan, really? Can I really like announce her? And I said, absolutely. So, but I didn't announce. So I get on first. And I'm like, you know, we know who the headliner is tonight. It's going to be Joan Jett, but we've got a surprise guest. Mm. And all of a sudden, Sharon Stone walks on stage, and everyone went crazy oh, wow. wild. And then she did her little shtick, and then Joan came on, rah, 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 you know, Joan Jett. And then after Joan Jett was done, you know, I was, you know, I was doing what I was doing. And then they came back, and then Sharon walked around, and I introduced her to Joan Jett, and then I left them in the room together because I don't have to be there. And they were chit-chatting. And then when when um, Sharon was leaving, 
she I was standing there like by the doorway thingy and she said Gan I just want to say thank you I had the best time blah 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 and I and I said okay I have to tell you something I love you <laughs> <laughs> I love you. And she smiled and she giggled. And then she hugged me. And I thought, okay, that's good. I'm like, I'm touching her. Now yeah, it's like yeah. a touch. Yeah, you know, I, I'm like, touch. I've got like her, her, her skin cells just never came off again. on me. You know what I mean? Never it again. just flaked on me. I've got like yeah. DNA on me. And then she pulled back. And then she planted one on my lips. Aww, my girlfriend, my girlfriend was standing right there. Okay. And I was like, like, like so excited, but in a way, not panicked, but uncomfortable in a way. You know, my girlfriend's looking at this, right? So I get her in her car and I go to my girlfriend and I just looked at her because I, I still had this shit. I had this shit ass oh, grin. Oh, my bad. You know, like, hi. Ah, you know? And she looked at me. She goes, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you get that one. She said, it's okay. I'm a little jealous, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, my good. Yeah, no, 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 no. But that was. Yeah, no, no, that was fun. I, I'm trying really hard to find a commercial that I voiced in like, I don't know, 1990. Mm -hmm. And the actress is Sharon Stone. So it's and it was Buff Puff, and I I put it on my Facebook, but I I don't what, know what you I'll voiced find it. for Sharon Stone. Yes, she did. They need her to do it. I a British dubbed accent. her. I dubbed her. Oh, she's God. doing the Buff Puff, and oh, I'm wow. Buff Puffing, but it's Sharon Stone. That's so cool. That's so I cool. I just posted it recently. I'll send it. to Why you. Why do you think that they didn't want her to use her original? It was before she was famous. Oh, she was a model. Hoo -hoo. Right. Yeah, she was so hot. <laughs> she was beautiful. She still, still is. is. Is she married? I just haven't seen her in a minute. No, she divorced. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if they were ever married, but no. But, mm -hmm. you know, she's fucking hot. I haven't seen her. I don't even remember the last time I saw her. It doesn't matter. Follow her on Instagram. She's oh. very popular. Yeah, <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> so, okay, have you ever dated a celebrity? Never. Never. Not even close. Not even close. Dated? Okay. Are you kidding me? Never. Slept anything like that. Oh, God Inappropri no. Inappropriately brushed against uh -uh. them. Uh no. I mean, and I, I've been, I've run into. There's been lots of different ones that I've seen growing up around here, like Kevin Bacon, Sly Stallone, um, uh, Washing. What's his name? The hot black Denzel. Guy? Denzel. Um. Yeah, he's in Toluca Lake, or he was. Uh, Steven yeah, Tyler. But uh, oh, Adam Levine. But I mean, I've never. Don't, can't approach them okay. ever. No. Have you ever dated, slept with, or God knows what you do? Of course. Who? <laughs> of course. All right. Who? Well, I've been in and out of acting for about twenty years now. So, um... <laughs> well, like the last one, I, I could say the name, but it probably wouldn't be good if I did. Mm -hmm. um, can Can you tell us a hint? Did you sleep with them or kiss them or? It's, it's, we, we slept together. A, a few, boy or a, few, a girl? A few times. A boy or a girl? <laughs> Matt Davis. Who? Uh, Matt Davis. Who's that? Who's Vamp that? Vampire Diaries and um, mm, uh, Al Le Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde. Matt Davis. Um, her boyfriend in Legally Blonde. Mm, okay. Nice. Um, the really gorgeous guy that she went to law school to try to get back. I have to watch the show again. I did like the show. Yeah. Um, so he was the last. Oh, the ham. There oh, you go. Shit. So pulling him up. Oh my oh, god. Nice one. I'm like he was the last Can one. Can you find Buff Buff? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> there have been like actors, like models and stuff before that. Women, obviously. Um, but yeah, so he was the last one. Okay, Cara. I, I have a point about this. Cara. Yeah, I think you know I've had a few. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if we're getting in trouble. Can I start with no, these people? No, we're not. I'll just oh. start with one because it was. Uh, an amazing time in my life. I was 19 and I met the Eagles and I ended up <gasps> being flown to Los Angeles by Don Henley. Oh, Don Henley. Yeah. So, wow. That was a... You, you guys yeah. had a tierced? Yeah, we were. Wow, Don Henley. I was there for a few, good few months. Mm, Laurel Canyon with Don Wow. Henley. Oh, the Laurel Canyon It was Canyon a busy year though. Because oh, after, wow. after Don, because he met some other girl on the road, obviously, and off he went. But um, I then had a sort of a brief fling at, this is the kind of slightly naughty one, because he was married. Mm. But he's been married so many times, what does it matter now? Exactly. <laughs> David Foster. Oh, okay. So, okay. Who's yeah, David that Foster? That was 74 as he's well. He's a music producer. writer. Producer. He produces everyone. Yeah. Oh, a producer. Yeah. Yeah. Celine Dion, Barbra Streisand. Oh, there he is. I'm looking at him right, right. now. He's a very handsome man. He's now married mm -hmm. to is a very Linda? young girl. Is he still married to Linda? No. Oh. He goes through the wives like, <laughs> you know, like a new source on his 
pastor. Catherine McPhee, yes, he's married to He's Catherine married to that young woman? Oh. Yes, she's younger than me. No. She is like in her late 20s or God, 31 or that's something. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he, if I'm sorry, he's like, mm, seven, yeah, yeah. He's in his <laughs> 70s. Yeah, he is. But he was very handsome, incredibly talented. And he, he was playing the piano for the Rocky Horror Show uh, at the um, the Rainbow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No. Next door to the Rainbow. Roxy? The Roxy. The Roxy. The Roxy. Well, I didn't want to... it then. I didn't want to sort of name drop here, but I might as well tell you Brad Pitt was my <laughs> oh, first. Oh, okay. That's what I yeah, figured. So. I figured. <clears throat> Amadeus, you're not going to go unscathed. I'm not going to go unscathed. Well, because I love you, I'll answer the question. So not my cup of tea. I know. <laughs> Uh, because I could give two shits. What is this? Yeah. Thing? I'm going to tell you why. There's a reason no, why I'm asking. You. I trusted you. Uh, people that I'd say are known because I've been in entertainment, maybe, but you don't know their names. So I don't think that's celebrity. Uh, I'll say a. I was with somebody, though, that definitely uh, gave me my highest compliment because of some other celebrities they were with. <laughs> so, which would be Krista hmm. McNichol and Ellen and some other people. Christopher Wait, McNichol. Not me, but, but girlfriend. A girlfriend that made the rounds with oh, the okay. celebs. Right. So technically, I guess that means. But she was that lovely young girl, and what happened to her? She, well, she that lovely young girl um, ended up. Well, I do Christy know, McNichol? She ended up dating someone who kind of let her I down. I have no idea. That was just the closest. I, I'm adjacent. Yeah, oh you're adjacent. No, Christy, Christy, what I do know in, is that Christy McNichol. Um, as she got older, she was gay. I mean, she was gay. Yeah, she was gay. And, and it she, wasn't really acceptable no, to be and gay. And she was then. dating someone who she led her down a wrong path of mm, yeah. drugs and stuff. So she kind of got off the path. Off the rails. Hmm. Um, and, you know, and then coming out before Ellen, quite frankly, she came out before Ellen. Mm. You know, it wasn't, you know, everyone right. kept saying, you know, the little kid from, what was the show? Family? Family. Was it family? Was it one day at a time? No, no, no. 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 But it's like, it was not acceptable. So it's this little kid. It was. And then so, you know, and and a lot of times child actors, they're just fucked up. It's really sad. They just get so screwed up. So screwed up. But her brother, Jimmy. Oh, okay. You know, Jimmy does stuff. I think he's directing now or something. So, but yeah. it's So what I meant to say is, okay, in this town, it's about, Little darling. We're talking superficial now. And this is what I get back to. This town is superficial. Do I give a shit who fucked anybody? If it's a celebrity, who I meet, who I talk to? Normally, when I tell you guys stories, it's not because it's like, look at me, I've met the celebrities. I just think they're funny stories, mm-hmm. you know? Right, yeah. But in this town, it's about value. It's mm-hmm. about value. It's who you know, who you fuck. Mm-hmm. You know, how much money you have, what kind of car you drive. So it's in this town. I don't know about Orange County. I don't know. But I know in Los Angeles and probably every other, a lot of other cosmopolitan towns, oh, yes. it mm-hmm. is all about superficiality. So the little, the little exercise is, you know, so you slept with someone famous or made out with them. Did it, did it matter in your life? Number one. Number two. Were they better because they were famous? No, they're just regular people. So when you go out, you know, and you're being scoffed at or being pushed aside or talked about or not being invited or, you know, <clears throat> that those are mean people. Mm-hmm. And those are mean people with very small values. Mm-hmm. But they, as you said, it's a tier system. Or what? What did you use that word? What did you say? I said, uh, I uh, positioning. It's like positioning. It's positioning. It's yeah. Uh-huh. It's positioning. You know, and when that happens, and you find yourself around those people, you know, it's always, I guess, first instinct to look inward and feel less of and less than about yourself. But when you come up against stuff like that. It's actually you're more empowered because you are better than those people. And it's probably better that you don't fit in because it shows that you have a confidence, that you have confidence, that you're empathetic, that you have a soul, and that you're a deeper person. 
And it's about what's inside, not what's on the outside and what value you have. Doesn't it just mean you don't have a backstage pass? No, <laughs> because I get the backstage passes. Yes, you do. You know, I, I'm, I, I have to say I am in such gratitude for the experiences that I have and continue to have in my life. But I don't feel more special or better than anybody else who doesn't have those opportunities. And I would never put myself right. in a, a feeling, a, a, in a position of authority or, or whatever. Superiority. A superiority. <laughs> Thank you. Because I am fortunate and in gratitude because I just happen to know some nice people and people and it's where you work it's what you do i mean currency in a different town it wouldn't be as much fame and then in our culture at this time with you know whatever you know i mean america's transported a lot of i love america i wore a three-cornered hat but uh <laughs> i transport a lot of value on this surface thing but i mean you all know we all live in la uh, the currency of fame with famous people too, uh, you know, whatever it's a, it's a, woo, it's a slope like this. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know? You're famous. You've got a hit show. You've got a hit song. You're and in. Your shit. And then the next and one gone. Yes. Who and yeah. lost your back? Who? Pass. Oh, oh, exactly. that's a one stay, a one hit wonder. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Instead of celebrating that, that person, you yeah. know, had that one hit that was great. It's like oh, that one hit wonder. And that they're a creator and they, they're, they, you know, that, it, it, you know, it's a, it's just a wheel of fortune on that stuff. So just like life for anybody really. Yes, exactly. But that's what I'm saying. I mean, I mean, you know, cause you know, I've been there, I've been there before I became fortunate and, 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 and what happened and what I stepped into, you know, I feeling less than less than, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, it's like, you just have to be okay. And what is it? You're, what is, we've always said this, your vibe, your, your vibe finds your tribe. Mm. And the people who are casting, you know, dispersions or saying you're not good enough or you're not invited because what you did 15 years ago. So you're, you're an asshole or whatever, or you, you know what, you know, those people for me are the, you know, they, they are just sort of like stunted in their growth. Mm -hmm. it, 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 and that's not, I don't mean like spiritual growth, mm -hmm. they, the, the work, they're just stunted at not really moving forward to become a better person because, and you know, we've always said this here, it's all about inclusivity. Being inclusive is really more the popular girls than to be exclusive, which are the mean girls. Mm. Mm-hmm. Or boys, because it happens popular. in the gay boy thing. You are popular. We are. We're all popular. We don't, and why? But why the need to be popular? Why the need to get outside gratification to tell you that you're like, that you're you. that you're better, that you're good, that you have value, that you have value? Why do we need that out? Why do we need that? Some people Be need that. Some people yeah. need it because they're insecure. But we've all been insecure. It's it's a normal oh definitely, thing. but we've not all of us have tried to be popular. Right. right. Yeah. But we've been insecure, but we all want to be in the popular crowd. We want to get, you know, we want to, maybe not now. Yeah. And this is what I've learned. And, and, and I've again, never thought, I mean, I, I agree with you that, you know, as a human being, maybe we want attention and there's something, I mean, I think that's a little universal, but I, I can never tell you that I ever wanted to be in the popular or not in it. I, I real I honestly, that would be a falsity because I, maybe because I grew up being different or I don't know, or but, I grew up with but that's no. what I'm saying. I was different. I've always been different, but I've never thought of myself as popular or not popular. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, I was, if you look at it in that terminology, I've always been popular. Mm -hmm. I've been popular my entire life. Not because, and I didn't care. It wasn't about that. People gravitated toward me. You yeah. know, it, it's just, but it, it's not that I sat there and went and gloated over I'm popular. I'm the popular girl and I've got all these popular people. That's fucked up, man. That's she didn't grade. even have the Coke. I but didn't. The <laughs> only time, <laughs> the only time I ever wanted to be popular was seventh grade. And then I was like, God, look at the, if I have to be someone other than I am in order to get that or do things that I don't that like ditch and dine or whatever you call dine and ditch and sleep around and is. do drugs. It's not for me, you know, but I think, what other people think of us is really not our business. Correct. Yeah. So exactly. And hopefully you grow out of that need of needing to be validated. Absolutely. So, I mean, like I just said, we're going to wrap up, but I mean, I, I, what I'm just saying is, 
you know, look at yourself and value yourself, you know, mm-hmm. work, you know, work on you and be the best you can, you can be for you, mm-hmm. not because some, you want to fit into someone or fit into a mold, mm-hmm. be you oh, love yeah. yourself. And, you know, and again, you know, as we get older and it's not because we're old, but it's through experience, you know, and, and, and it's experience and you, you learn to, like, I remember one thing, um, a friend of mine said when she hit 60, mm-hmm. I'm a couple of years away from that. Hold on. Hold on. Just, More than a couple. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not just a couple. I'm taking that in right now. No, I'm mm-hmm. kidding. Um, they said when you hit 60, it's one of the best feelings in the world because at that point, your whole life, you say you don't give a fuck. But at 60, you really don't <laughs> give a fuck what people say, what people do. I heard that yeah, at 40 was the age you yeah, feel that way. Yeah, we keep pushing it. At the, okay. oh, the older <laughs> I get, the, the longer, the, the more I push it down toward my sliding scale. <laughs> but I just wanted to say, everybody, Amadeus, I know you have a, you probably have a parting thought here. Oh, oh, I did. I look like I did. I you have did. <laughs> I, yes, I did. Well, I, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to look like I was, you know, jumping out. I was going to say, I don't know, because I've never had to go, but I am going to have to go in a minute. But my my parting thought when I, is that I agree. And I wanted to be on this show and I'll always be on it because your heart has always showed me that uh, you're inclusive for reals. And uh, it means a lot. Well, thank you. I love you. You go back to doing what you do. I appreciate it. You're always welcome here. Hey, look, I'm telling you, the first and third of every month, I'm, I, I don't want to see you on the screen. I'd like to see you right here yeah, at our table. Yeah, come on right in. Here. Yeah, come on in. I want to. <laughs> so you let me know when you come in. And thank you so thank you, much. Amadeus. I appreciate you making time for us. And you're always just a joy. And I love you. And you know I do. I love you guys. Okay. Bye. Be safe. Happy. Happy. Happy, happy <laughs> Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for joining us on Between the Sheets podcast here on the United Broadcasting Network, the first and third Friday of every month. Um, oh, I have a guest. Oh, I didn't tell you guys. I have a guest on the third of this month, which I don't know what the date is. And I think you know her. She's a musician and an artist. Her name is Mar Hobbs. She's in the community. Oh, I love Mar. <clears throat> Mar is going to be on. And she's also really intense and just like us. Yeah. You know, we'll talk philosophy and stuff. So I'm right. really looking forward to having my friend Mar on. And I think I'm going to see. I hope she'll, she'll bring some music so um, so we can hear. I don't know what she's working on. I don't know whatever that's the 23rd that's the yeah, 23rd, 23rd of okay. july so we'll have mar hobbs on i don't know i'm sure i'm I, Cara will be away maybe she'll call in i know this one will be here i know that one will be here and who knows who else will fit i want to thank tony thank you so much Thanks, thank tony. it's always tony. nice to see you and have you here in the studio but also importantly i appreciate all of you from very sincere from the bottom of my heart i love that you guys interact whether it's online whether it's sometimes calling whether it's watching the show and, and continuing to share it. I really do appreciate you taking the show and sharing it. Um, I know the Fionians are present. Um, so I don't know, you know, that's Fiona. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to call it Gayona cause there's no Gayonians cause that's kind of weird. It sounds kind of bizarre. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Fiona Fionians, it would be gay Gayonians. I mean, that's kind of weird. It sounds like <laughs> some sexual toy that you find at the pleasure chest. I don't know. That seems very painful, but anyway, between the sheets, um, <laughs> I would know it, but it's not. of course you know, oh, it. it's not. <clears throat> so thank you so much. Really. I mean, you know, like I said, we have fun and, and we appreciate how open you are to our discussion and and have no judgment and if you do you don't tell us and that's the way it should be <laughs> but i mean seriously um i just really appreciate you i appreciate i don't know every single one of you and i just want to say that it's it's partly because of you this was a passion of mine but it's because of you guys and and the ladies that come and sit at this table that allow me to continue to to sort of have my dream have my thing and have my passion Um, So I do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, 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 please have a safe 4th of July weekend. Drive safely. Drink. If you're going to drink, please, you know, as always, drink with caution. And please don't drink and drive because that's just not smart. And you people watching the show, if you like us and we're pretty fucking brilliant, then you must be brilliant too. So don't be dumb. Um, and I hate that word, but it's true. Um, but follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, uh, like the Between the Sheets Facebook page. Um, also Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno on YouTube. I thank you. 
I will go around the room. Mara, Mara, just quickly tell oh, them about uh, your shoes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm just going to say follow me if you're interested. You can see my artwork in the shoes I do. Um, Mara Shane on Facebook. MaraShaneArt.com and Mara underscore Shane um, on Instagram. Thanks. Tristan. I mean, Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So you can find me, Roxanne Rosen, um, on Facebook. If anyone wants a quote on solar, mention between the sheets. I'll give you a discount. If anyone's looking for a job, hit me up. Solar what? Solar panels on their house. But is there a company that they should? Yes, it's the, the company I'm representing now. Is called? Um, well, they should just go to her. Yeah, they have to come to me. Oh, <laughs> go to her and use between the sheets. Yes. Cora I will see what budgeons have a stock hill, Belsize Park. I'll be there. I'll be the crazy lady buying everything. <laughs> nice. Oh, can you bring back candy? Yes. Okay, thank you. Wine gums? Absolutely. Smarties? Oh, oh my yes. God, wine gums. Um, arrow bars? Uh-huh. Um, Cadbury with fruit and nut, because the one, the Cadbury fruit and nut here. Not the same. Doesn't taste the same. It, it, oh, thank you. Oh, I don't really need it. You but think I don't you. know about chocolate? Okay, just checking. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you, Tony. I love you guys. And as always, be safe, be well, and namaste. Have a great weekend. See you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.